he opened up a ginger ramen bar on campus at Notre Dame. And as a, you know, a golden domer, I can tell you that is going to do very well at Notre Dame. That is that is one thing that's for sure. But on top of that, right, he also has his own venture capital arm. Mm. So what that means is uh, uh, he and what he actually does as well is um, host annual pitch com competitions for black companies, you know, black owned companies, Latinx owned companies and female founders. And of course, that has led to him investing in uh, you know a number of different companies: Zertu, Onyx, East, The Cycle, Cohatch, CEV Collection, which is a sunglass company, Nestre, which is a mental strength app, and EOS Worldwide, which is an operate Nestle. you know operating like system. So I wanted to ask you though, Brandon, like how do athletes get into entrepreneurship while they're actively playing? I mean, James Smith, he's obviously a great example of this. Well, there's a lot here, <clears throat> and please jump in the chat if anybody has any questions. Um, or any comments, we love to hear from you guys. Um, first off, I, I want to say just uh, big ups to him. You know, he's faced a lot of adversity yeah. um, and to still be able to be standing, playing ball and also building his empire is impressive. Not a lot of guys uh, are in position to transition or in position to find that second mountain. There's a dope book out there called, you know, your second mountain, right? So a lot of guys play ball or whatever, or a woman could be doing one thing. And then it's like, when that's done, what are you building next? If you have an opportunity to build something next, right? Yeah. A lot of guys are struggling. Some of your favorite NBA players, NFL players right now is struggling and struggling big time. And you may not even know it. Um, there's a lot of opportunities because you talked about his uh, his uh, his concept on campus. Yeah. I think that's the some of the biggest missed opportunities for us as athletes is we're not investing enough on campus. Our names are legendary on some of these campus. So that was the first amazing move that he made. Very bright. I, I, I went back to UCF and I tried to do it, but I didn't have the chops and, mm -hmm. and I just didn't understand it. Um, but I knew if myself, like I got like... A, myself, Dante Culpepper, Santi Samuels, like uh, Mike Sims Walker, I rally all the troops and was like, yo, like we need to come together, invest in some of these new developments and also uh, create concepts because our names will fill these things up. Um, what do you have to do? <clears throat> First off, don't put the fame before the game. It's key. What we're seeing now with a lot of guys, especially at the high school level, college level, now that they passed the, the nil name image likeness uh, um, bill, where now they can monetize their name image likeness, they're focused on that. The parents are focused on that. You know, what about this kid still developing? What about this kid understanding that you could potentially get the Patrick Mahomes deal of $450 million. You could potentially get uh, the, the Lamar Jackson deal where he's making 50, what is it, $52 million yeah, a 52, year? Yeah, 52, yeah. Right? Like, that's the bag. That's your opportunity. So don't put the fame before the game. What does that mean? I think there's a process. I think there's a life cycle to this. When you make it to the NFL, and, and, and now things are changing because he's, you got athletes that are making $300,000 a month, $400,000 a month. Some are making a million dollars a month in college. <laughs> Before they even get there, there's kids getting big bags from their collect like collectives from around the country, like the Alabama collective, the Tennessee collective. That's where the top entrepreneurs in those, you know, those those schools come together and they're funding these programs. And so the the life cycle for me, the process for me is really first you come in a league, and if you don't know, you start exploring. You're focused on your games in the off season. Maybe a couple of your, your off days in season, you start asking questions. You shadow, you know, the people in your industry, in your space. You may take sit down with them and have a coffee. That's important because you want to learn. You start reading. You start watching documentaries. You may even take a, a, a course online, right? When you feel like you are a true pro, and what is a true pro? You have your routine down. You know how to take care of your body, right? You're in a good flow in the recovery. What time are you waking up? You're productive on the field. You're approaching your next deal, right? That's when you start putting together your plan to invest in what you want to invest in. I think this is important, extremely important because there's never going to be a time where an athlete is going to have millions of people watching them every single Sunday. Right. Yeah. Seven months out of six months out of the year. Yeah. Think about that. 
You got 70,000 people live in stadium. 40,000, 35,000 in the arena if you play basketball. But then there's another three to four million that could be watching you through a broadcast. And then after that, you get more you get, you get more opportunities to create more impressions. Because if you ball out, guess what happens? You are the one that's sitting there and you have the presser. Not everybody get that opportunity, right? But you could be the one sitting right in front of that backdrop and like, hey, man, we want to talk about how your team, what your team did and how blah, blah, blah. Did you not see um, uh, uh, D'Angelo? Is that his name? D'Angelo Russell for the Lakers. He had his uh, energy drink. He had an energy drink, mm -hmm. right? So boom. Coco five or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What is it called? Coco five. I Coco think. five. I just ran into um, <coughs> the founder of, of of Coco five in, in Boca. Shout out to them, Chicago brother. So he had Coco five sitting here, right here. Boom. And then the 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 team came, and the team said, "What? No, you can't put that up there. There's not a, a team uh, uh, a partner. It's not sponsored by the NBA. Right. right, right. Actually, let me tell you what I did every time I had a press conference. Man, they had those Gatorade bottles up there. I move all that. They not paying me, right? <laughs> but I'll put my products up there. I'll put wh who was sponsoring me. That was an opportunity because there was another 500,000 to a million people that could potentially see that, 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 that clip, that presser. So you have to understand that you'll never have that much visibility. You'll never have that type of platform again. We're blessed on our platform to have... Um, you know, the team that we have, meaning you guys that follow us on social, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, or YouTube clips. So we're, this is anomaly for, you know, you know, us contributors on I Am Athlete to still be able to have this type of reach. But you're, most athletes, I would say 97% of athletes are never going to get that opportunity. So what are you pitching? What are you selling? What are you building? Right. And so that's why I love what he's doing is because he's starting it now in about time he's ready to transition. Mm -hmm. It's already built. Yeah. Right. Coco five is actually really cool. If you um, look at their um, website, uh, shout out to JP for sending this to me. It lists all of the people who are involved in the company. And you have Devin Booker, who's a majority owner and ambassador. D'Angelo Russell's a partner. Derek Rose is a partner. Um, the Morris brothers are partners. Uh, Jaleel Okafor is a strategic partner. You have Michael Wilbon, who's a partner. Charles Barkley is a partner. It's actually really cool. It's all black athletes or yeah. former athletes. And um, it's, yeah. it's built on, since it's for athletes, it's built with athletes in mind as part of their entire infrastructure of their company, which is actually very cool. So yeah. That's awesome. And, 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 and look at all the names you, you, you listed there. Athletes now are investing um, in, into startups. Um, we're seeing guys uh, participate in exits. KD, he's probably made almost a hundred million off the court. I mean, I, I, I speculate. I'm just throwing numbers out. I know he had like one big one, like thirty million dollar exit. Um, LeBron James. You have Steph Curry, the Russell Westbrooks, the Russell Wilsons. There's a lot of guys doing some big things. So like, I won't be long winded here. Yes, Ashley. Um, you must have wanted to take a break. You must have wanted to take a break here because when you sent this to no, court, actually, like, you, I, actually I know have Brandon a, can talk 15, no, I actually have a No, I also had a question about That's this good. that I wanted to ask. I mean, we, we speak about football specifically. Obviously, the NBA is different. The money is different in the NBA. But football, there's only such a small percentage of guys who are making a lot of money. Yep. Um, so I feel like, or I wonder rather, does that make entrepreneurship more difficult and is that why a lot of the times guys maybe don't invest that money correctly while they're actively playing so that they're set up for life after football because mm -hmm. a lot of the times guys are kind of living not paycheck to paycheck some guys maybe mm -hmm. but they don't have the um disposable income that say mm -hmm. a lamar jackson or cd lamb or dak prescott or those big names yep. that are making big money have so it makes it more difficult for them. No, how do you combat that? Times are changing and, 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 and here's how it's changing, right? It's a mindset. Uh, it's a training. Um, you know, it's a philosophy, right? So the, 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 the philosophy around athletes and their money is you're never going to make this money again. Athletes go broke because they invest in the House of Athletes of the world, the I Am Athletes of the world. They invest in barbershops. They invest in restaurants. So, look, take your money 
and let your money work for you. Mm -hmm. And so when we first got, when I first got in the league, I never forget Dre Blah was like, yo, what you're looking for is just a 5% return. And that is super, super conservative. We're talking about, you know, just the markets over the last 10 to 12 years. Well, I got to take, I had a call from Morgan Stanley yesterday. It's like, yo, it's a volatile market. He's got to give you a heads up that your, your portfolio may take another hit. And we're talking about losing millions of dollars over the last year. But but I, the market oh, traditionally outside of the this, this this the global economy over the last a year and a half, you can easily get a 12% return on your money. There's guys that are bringing back 22%, right? Damn. But the more aggressive you are, right? Like it, it basically like if, if I put my I put my money in the market and I'm like, yo, I ain't going to touch it. I ain't going to look at it for 10, 12 years. But you can be aggressive and make more money where you, you can say, like, I'm going a, I'm to a play the stocks like on a weekly basis, daily basis, a monthly basis. So what they're telling us as athletes is be conservative, make your money and don't do anything with it. Now, athletes are making more money. Right. Like when I got in the league, like the Jerry Rice of the world, they were making like three, four five million. Jerry Rice is the GOAT. In my eyes, right? I made more money than Jerry Rice. Okay. And now you got receivers that are number twos that's making more money than me. And they don't even have half the stats that I had, right? Receivers making 20, 30 million dollars. So mm -hmm. now you do have the disposable income, not everybody. You do have the disposable income to take chances. So what you're seeing is guys diversifying their portfolio by saying, okay, I'm going to be conservative over here. I'm also going to put this over here with life savings. I'm going to go um, put this over here in cash, but then I'm also going to t allocate maybe a hundred thousand dollars a year. Some guys may be allocating a million dollars a year to invest in startup and invest in some of these opportunities. Right. And so things are changing and it, and it really is because athletes, we are lazy. We are copycats. It's, we mm -hmm. say it's a copycat league. So you have like LeBron James of the world doing this. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry's of the world investing in launching funds and you know uh production companies etc cetera, etc cetera. you know russell wilson on football even uh tom brady uh the the michael strahan's uh and there's so many other guys that's doing it at a high level aaron Rodgers quietly he's an owner of the bucks part owner small yeah. and he's invested in some big things so i think it's a mindset thing but it's definitely shifting ashley Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys, we're going to transition. Y'all I can talk about this. No, that I was need to start like great. a whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I put all my money. I did the opposite. I did the opposite mm -hmm. of what my financial advisor said. I retired with no debt. Yeah. Everything paid off. Mom's house paid off. Dad's house paid off. Wife's mom's house paid off. All cars paid off moving into a a, 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 a a career where I could potentially make, like my vision when I retired was, you know, I was going to leverage TV to push back to like, you know, my nonprofit when my nonprofit became the for-profit and that's House of Athlete. But I was looking at Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan, this is what I know, right? And it's, it's public, so I'm not just throwing it out there. It's almost, I think it's like $30 million a year. I'm like, yo, within five years, I'll be at 10. You know, and I really work at it and perfect my craft. I could be at 20, you know, in front of the camera. Um, and so, like, my plan was that retire, everything paid off, uh, uh, no debt. And my money, that is my money making money, not even touching that. Now I got all this other cash coming in. Man, I did the opposite. Yeah. I missed all my cash. <laughs> and I am at the house of athlete. Oh, God. Ashley, listen to me. It's boom or bust. Boom or bust. If, 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 and then y'all out there, if y'all ain't rocking with us <laughs> and y'all stop following the show, hell, I'm going to be asking y'all for, for, for a place to stay. I'm going to be asking y'all for $5. Ashley, I might be staying with you. I'm all in. I'm pot committed. <laughs> my so financial advisor is like, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I love it, though. I wouldn't change it. You know, the only thing for me is, like, making sure my kids is good. Like, I feel like we have an opportunity I was listening to a clip to T.D. Jake, so he's on Breakfast Club, and he was talking about disruption, right? And he was like, you got to be willing to break it down and build it back up better, right? And so there's a lot of opportunity for us uh, men, women, especially men and women of co color, to participate in spaces that weren't, you know, welcoming to us before. Like, even new media, right? Like, I love, you know, Draymond. That was last year Draymond had his podcast, and he was doing it on that run. 
I believe he launched it last year, yeah. Right, like going out there and just, he, he's one new media, new media, new media, new media. Yo, like I love that. I support the entrepreneur because um, there's a lot of opportunity for us in media. There's a lot of opportunities for us in, 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 in you know, e-commerce. Um, I mean, across the board. So if you're out there, have a plan, you know, learn, um, know that's going to be hard. You know, some of the greatest companies, the products that you love, you know, they've been around for years, but y'all didn't see the first five, seven years. Y'all didn't see, you know, what they what they went through to build it, right? Like read the stories and read the books. Yep. 